Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called The Truly Strong, written by Rebel Hero. We had never been to war with the humans before. We had heard the stories from other races who had faced them in combat. They had remarked upon their outlandish strategies and their fierce resistance. Every race that fought the humans, win or lose, considered them a more than worthy opponent. Every race that fought the humans came away respecting them. When the time came for us that war was to be declared on the humans, what took us by surprise the most was how they hard they tried to avoid going to war with us. We knew that they were not afraid of us. Their avoidance of a fight seemed to come from a position of strength, not cowardice. Perhaps, we thought, they had been weakened by another recent conflict. We should have heeded our own ancient proverbs. The truly strong do not seek to prove their strength, only to share it, as the saying goes. But the humans committed an error that demanded war. No matter how much they tried to talk us out of it, no matter what bargains they brought, they landed vehicles of war on one of our planets. This constituted an invasion by our laws, and their repeated refusal to answer our call to war insulted our honor. The laws and demands of honor were clear. When it became clear to the humans that we would not back down, their tones changed. Instead of trying to weasel out of their insult upon our honor, they requested a war council. They requested a presence of political leaders and military leaders alike on neutral territory. Our advising species, allies, and trading partners all strongly recommended that we accept and attend. They warned us to take it seriously. At the War Council, the humans outlined the conditions for waging war upon them. In the age of planet-cracking missiles, life-destroying bioweapons, and star-collapsing bombs, rules of war seemed outrageous. All of these superweapons were prohibited from use in a war with the humans. We thought they were joking, that they had lured us here to waste our time and prepare their invasion. We soon found that they were not, as they layered more and more rules upon us. We would have been outraged if we had not been so stunned. Restrictions on weapons, ship class, what can and cannot be targeted, the establishment of no conflict lanes for civilians to flee from combat, the treatment of enemy combatants and prisoners of war, ceasefire periods to collect the wounded and dead from the battlefield. With so many rules, it seemed to us the humans treated war like a sporting event instead of battle. Our representatives were not pleased. You treat this as if it is a game. Where is your honor? Where is your desire for battle or victory? They had demanded, throwing a hefty stack of papers across the room in a fit of anger. The human representative simply looked tired at the time, yet mistaking it for boredom which further enraged us. It is a game, a game played by honorless children. There is no honor in war. War itself is a lack of honor. Honor is everything that precedes a war and everything that follows it. There is only one honorable way to wage war. And that is to never wage it at all. The human military representative spat back at us. There was a fire in his speeches. We were too insulted to notice then. But that fire was hatred. The humans hated us for forcing them to war. These rules are our attempt to bring a scrap of honor to war, to lessen the burden of those who would suffer. Those who had never had a chance, never had a say in whether or not war was waged. So, do the honorable thing and sign the agreement, or prepare for total war. Those last words were a whisper, a quiet threat that had every other species in the room suddenly on edge. Thank the Supreme God that we noticed it. Our representatives were quiet for a long moment. Our war leader spoke up first, slowly and quietly. What happens if this total war is what we wish? What happens when it is our desire to fight a worthy opponent at full strength, to clash on a battlefield with nothing held back? The human sighed and rubbed the side of his face, as if he was a tired father trying to explain a simple fact to a young child. Then we all lose. Hundreds of billions will die. And for what? Pride! 
honor, land, any number of things that could be sorted out at a meeting, or over a beer and or and a fist fight. Crippled economies, entire planets lost, food, energy, resources, all scarce. Who picks up the pieces after that? A war like that doesn't end with a ceasefire. The battle continues on every street, in every home of all the survivors. The war ends, but the suffering continues for years, decades. Please, just sign the agreement and let's leave the fighting to the soldiers who signed up for it. Let's leave the citizenry out of it. If we must fight, let us fight and be done with it. The room buzzed with nervous energy. We were no strangers to war. We had battled our way to the empire we held. But the human's plea forced us to remember an aspect of war that we all wished to ignore. The aftermath. The drop after the high of battle fades. We didn't know why the humans cared so much for the lives of people. So much, though, did the citizens not live to serve the Empire. At the demands of our allies, though, many of which threatened to withdraw support if we refused to sign, we signed the agreement and war was officially declared. Two years we were utterly defeated in two years. In the opening days of the war, we hit the humans hard. We overran their defenses with sheer might. We threw them from our space and pushed them back to their borders. We kept momentum slamming against their lines and chasing close behind them as they fled. Even with all their annoying restrictions, we outmatched them easily. Through system after system, we chased them as they fled, stopping only in vain attempts to slow our advance. Then... At one system, they dug in and our advance abruptly halted. It was like crashing into a cliffside in a wooden boat. We rose to the challenge, though. We were proud warriors. We relished the challenge. We hammered them endlessly. We knew how to prepare for a siege. We were ready. Supplies, ammo, reserves, we brought it all with us. But the humans did not give an inch. For a whole year, they held us at the border. Then... Reports from home began to flood in, several months out of date. While we were engaging with the humans here, at the border, they had sent other fleets out behind us. They had destroyed many of our shipyards and factories. Our farm worlds were blockaded, and financial centers were bombed. The first thing they had attacked, though, was our communications network. We had chased them right into a trap. They used our desire to humiliate them for questioning our honor against us. Our defense fleets were putting up a good fight, but anywhere they set up to defend, the humans had just attacked another target at the other end of our empire. With our communications crippled, we had no idea when and where they would show up. Sneaky, cowardly tactics, we had thought it at the time. The humans continued to disappoint us. We were told that they were amongst the best fighters in the galaxy, adept and efficient in warfare, an invaluable ally and a troublesome foe. We had misunderstood what they meant. Humans weren't efficient in fighting a war. They were efficient at ending a war. A few months after the initial reports of the humans attacking across our empire, away from the front lines, we received reports of our worlds falling into open rebellion. There hadn't been an open rebellion in our empire in centuries. There were always dissidents, but actually full-on rebellion those were the reports that finally made us realize how unprepared we were for human warfare. At that time, we had only seen war as a series of battles and supply lines. Fight enemy, conquer battlefield, capture or destroy objective, then move on. That was all we had needed to consider. As up to that point, we had fought wars in a linear fashion. An empire as large as ours had military just as large. We had money and resources to field hundreds of millions of fighting troops with acceptable weapons and armor and ships. The humans took all of our military doctrine and threw it back in our face. They cared nothing for honor and glory in combat like every other civilized race. Their tactics were base and cowardly, but effective. Very effective. We didn't adapt in time. We couldn't adapt in time. Thus, with our worlds falling to rebellion, our economy crippled, our supplies cut off, we were forced into our only unconditional surrender in the history of our empire. Humanity had made it clear that nothing else would suffice. When we entered the hall to sign our surrender and accept the humans' terms, we hung our heads, unable to meet the piercing stares of the humans. We'd expected smugness on their features, 
We expected them to gloat and belittle us. As usual, we were wrong. Their faces were a mix of fury and pity. When we signed the documents, we didn't even bother to read the conditions. We had simply assumed that it was the end of our empire. The end of our freedom. And as usual, we were so very wrong. Are you happy now? The human military leader stood as the convention came to an end. Tens of thousands of lives lost, trillions in damages. Half a dozen of your worlds are in open rebellion, increasing the casualty numbers every day. All because you couldn't accept an apology. The other humans in the area tried to move him back away, hold him back, but he threw them off. I am sick of having to go to war with one backwards ass species after another in order to show you that there is so much more to the universe than conquest. Many of the attending species lowered their heads while the human raged. I realized that those were the species that the humans had bested previously. They were the ones that begged us to accept the terms of human warfare. It was then, for me, that all the pieces fell into place. Nearly all of the attending species were major economic trading partners with the humans. Each of them had large militaristic empires in the past, just like ours. Unlike us, however, their history prominently featured some kind of disaster which fractured their empire and nearly resulted in their extinction. Were the humans responsible? Was that why they were so adamant on us signing their agreements? I am not sure if any of the others had the revelation that I had as we left the convention in shame. We returned to our empire in shambles. Our forces tried to hold together what we could, and we all but abandoned the worlds that rebelled. To say that this defeat was crushing would be an understatement. We had based our entire culture on pride and honor, on our aggressive expansion and military might. In just two short years, one single short war, and it all came crashing down. This demoralizing defeat crippled our leadership, as the strong of our society blamed them for our losses, and the weak banded together and attempted to overthrow us. It fell to those of us who kept our heads to try and run the empire, a nearly impossible task, given that the knowledge of how to run an empire sat firmly in the hands of the powerful old blood clans, who, I must reiterate, were so demoralized by this loss that they became useless lumps. When the human warp signatures appeared over our home planet, we believed it to be the end. Tens of thousands of ships, most of them larger than anything we have ever seen before, hovering in orbit. Thousands more spilling out the larger vessels. This is Fleet Admiral Kane of the Allied System Restoration Fleet. I hope you aren't too late. Reports from your system are, uh, uh, grim to say the least. This was the hail we received. No threats, no gloating. Just a man with a concern in his voice. I was the one managing the system communications that day. My response was a dumbfounded one. You... you aren't here to destroy us, uh, enslave us. Through that hail, I heard a brief sound of someone cheering, followed by a harsh admonishment. <laughs> they never read the terms. Kane had chuckled under his breath, though loud enough for me to hear. No! We come bearing aid, food, doctors, crisis management team, peacekeepers, construction equipment, and material. We even managed to snag a few asteroids full of raw materials and precious metals from neutral space, though, uh, uh mostly because I bet the engineering team they couldn't grab one as we passed it in sublight engines. None of us could believe what we heard, though none of us would have been surprised at this point. Everything we assumed about the humans was consistently wrong. A defeated empire is dangerous if left unattended. We learned that lesson back on Earth almost a thousand years ago. So, in the interest of furthering peace, we shall turn a defeated enemy into an ally. We will help you jumpstart your economy, repair your worlds, and bring peaceful ends to the rebellions. We will also work on re-establishing your government, though this time under a little guidance. You... well... You would help us? After defeating us in war? If it isn't just us. Our crews are made up of a few dozen allied species. Though the ships are human, make, and design. We may have built this fleet, but we couldn't crew it alone. And after this is all done, some of your race will probably join us in rebuilding the next hapless empire to get wrecked. Besides, the conflict is over. You aren't our enemies anymore. Their ships were hundreds of times larger than our largest. 
If they could spare these resources to both build ships and large and aid former enemies at the same time, what do their vessels of war, the ones they held back, look like? It was a chilling thought. With all of our belief in our superior might, with everything we built and achieved, they could have swept it all away with the press of a button. We were nothing to them, insects biting at the heels of giants. Oh, come on! Even if that was true, which it isn't, by the way, you're people just like everyone else. Even if it were true, and you were insects to us, insects still have their place in an ecosystem. Their presence is required for the health of the entire system. It's all just a matter of perspective. Just because someone is smaller or weaker doesn't mean that they deserve to be annihilated. Cain laughed over the hail. Apparently, I voiced my thoughts out loud. Oops. And... And what is this help going to cost us? I attempted to recover myself. Cost you? You've already paid the price. A crippled military, economy, and government. Not to mention the cost of lives. No. No, the price has already been paid. Cain responded. But my mind still reeled. None of this made sense. Obviously, every species out there had a different philosophy, different ways of living. This, though... This was too far out there. Why? I asked quietly. I heard Cain groan and take a deep breath. What do you want me to say, huh? His tone then took on a mocking flare. Because it's the job of the strong to protect the weak. Is that what you wanted to hear? No, man. His professionalism crumbled under the weight of his exasperation. I could hear him take a few breaths to regain his composure before continuing. We do this because it's the right thing to do. Your people are suffering. We have the means to aid you. So we are going to aid you. It would be cruel not to. It doesn't matter that we are former enemies. We weren't enemies before the war and now we aren't together. We are helping you because we can, because it is right. Now, will you accept our aid or will you turn us away? It was here that something tickled in the back of my mind. A saying from ancient days, always taken out of context without the full sentence. The truly strong do not seek to prove their strength. That was the saying we repeated to the youngsters as a platitude. A warning about pride, an admonishment to prevent them from making fools of themselves and starting needless fights. But somewhere tucked away in the back of my mind was the rest of the saying that we as a people had forgotten, or perhaps ignored. The truly strong do not seek to prove their strength, only to share it. Our reliance on systems of pride and honor led us to this point. Our narrow view of strength had led us to be humbled in the most devastating way possible. By our customs, to accept this help would make us weak, undeserving of life. I looked around at the people in the room with me. Most of them were barely hanging on. Despair had taken so many and was threatening to spread through the rest of us. No one else had a clear enough head to make this decision. Help us! Please, I asked quietly, ashamed. We would be happy to, was the only response. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.